All living things have two primary objectives, which are also known as biological imperatives. The first and most important of these two objectives is survival, or self-preservation. And since seed shrimp have been around for about 500 million years, I'd say they have a pretty good track record in that department. However, for most organisms, with the possible exception of the hydra, death is inevitable. So, in order to perpetuate the species, all organisms will need to survive long enough to reproduce or they'll eventually become extinct. Both of the creatures seen here are masters of survival and reproduction, and since they're at the bottom of the food chain, both of these animals are also very flexible when it comes to how they'll reproduce. Both the seed shrimp and Daphnia can change their method of reproduction based upon the environmental conditions that exist in their habitat. When conditions are favorable, such as when the water is clean and there's plenty of food available, both the seed shrimp and the Daphnia will reproduce asexually, which allows them to rapidly increase their numbers. During asexual reproduction, the female can produce offspring without the help of a male fertilizing her eggs. This method of reproduction is known as parthenogenesis, which comes from the Greek words for virgin birth. The benefits of asexual reproduction is that you only need one individual to start a whole new population, so there's no need for the female to go looking for a mate in order to make babies. This approach allows the female to put more time and energy into producing offspring instead of using some of that time and energy searching for a suitable mate. Asexual reproduction is a far more efficient way to make babies, so when conditions are favorable, they use this approach to produce lots and lots of offspring in a very short period of time. And a large number of offspring helps to ensure that some will survive to become adults and then go on to make babies of their own. The main drawback to this method of reproduction is that the babies are essentially clones of the mother, so there's very little genetic diversity in the offspring, which makes them much more vulnerable to disease and changing environmental conditions. A few other animals that can reproduce asexually include six species of sharks, turkeys, stick insects, honeybees, Komodo dragons, whip-tailed lizards, California condors, and the reticulated python. Mammals are not capable of parthenogenesis. Nonetheless, when conditions in the environment become unfavorable, such as the onset of winter, a lack of food, or insufficient oxygen in the water, both the Daphnia and the seed shrimp can change their reproductive strategy to one that uses both a male and a female in order to produce offspring. This is what's known as sexual reproduction, and it's a far less efficient way to make babies. This loss of reproductive efficiency is counteracted by the fact that sexual reproduction creates offspring with a greater genetic diversity because the babies have a unique combination of both the mother and the father's DNA. So, as changing conditions in their habitat make life more difficult, sexual reproduction produces offspring with more genetic diversity, which makes them much better suited to surviving in a harsh environment. For those of you who haven't seen my video entitled Life on a Leaf, I highly recommend that you watch that video for more information about these amazing little animals known as seed shrimp. There are over 8,000 species that we know of and they live in almost every habitat imaginable. They even show up from time to time in freshwater aquariums. However, they're only about a millimeter in length, so you'll have to look real close to see them. And they do tend to stay hidden in tanks containing fish, so you're more likely to see them in tanks that are dedicated to other invertebrates such as shrimp tanks. Now let's move away from this floating stick and take a closer look at the Daphnia that are swimming all around it. These crazy little crustaceans are called Daphnia, and due to their erratic style of swimming, they're also sometimes referred to as water fleas. 
Daphnia make an excellent food source for baby fish, and just like the seed shrimp, they can alter their reproductive strategy to suit the changing conditions in their environment. When life is good and resources are plentiful, the females reproduce asexually, but when conditions turn for the worse, they use sexual reproduction instead. And like all animals with an exoskeleton, Daphnia need to molt in order to grow, and this little female Daphnia is about to do just that. And when she does, she'll also leave behind this special egg case known as an ophipium. Ophipia are especially designed to be highly resistant to cold temperatures, as well as a total lack of moisture. Ophipia are also sometimes referred to as resting eggs. Inside the ophipium, there are two female embryos that are in a state of suspended animation. The embryos in the ophipium can remain like this for several years, and they won't resume their development until more favorable conditions return. Daphnia that live in bodies of water that tend to dry up each year will produce large numbers of ophipia. These resting eggs will then lie dormant until the conditions in their habitat improve. When they receive the proper stimulus, development of the embryos inside resumes and these resting eggs then hatch and the females inside will re-establish a whole new population of Daphnia. These ephipia may be dispersed by the wind or get carried away by animals, thus colonizing new habitats or re-establishing extinct populations. There are over 200 species of Daphnia that we know of, but exact numbers are hard to confirm because they can change their size and their appearance based on the type of habitat that they live in and the size of the predators that they face. Daphnia can be raised at home as a live food for fish. They're filter feeders and can be fed using green water. Be sure to keep the water aerated using a small air stone and to provide them with 10 to 12 hours of light each day. Watch closely as this little Daphnia is about to molt, and when she does, the ephipia will be released along with her old exoskeleton. And there you have it, the female Daphnia has just completed molting, leaving behind the ephipium to ensure that when conditions in the habitat improve, a whole new generation of Daphnia will be born and the great cycle of life will start all over again. And that brings us to the end, which is really just a new beginning. Please help support my effort to continue bringing you these high-quality videos by sending vast sums of money to my PayPal account. And if that's a bit too much to ask, you could always hit the like button, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and have a spectacular day. And remember, life will always find a way.